friends who were in the right place at the right time, and their actions changed history. This is their story. They were tourists. He was a terrorist. And without their courage, scores of people could have been killed. Friday, August 21st, just after 3 p.m., three lifelong friends from California board a train in Amsterdam bound for Paris. College student Anthony Sadler, U.S. Air Force Airman First Class Spencer Stone, and Army National Guard Specialist Alex Scarlatos, fresh off a deployment to Afghanistan. The trio had agreed to meet in Europe for the vacation of a lifetime. Instead, their lives were changed forever by what happened on board that train. We begin tonight in France with a story that sounds like something out of a Hollywood thriller, but stars three very real American heroes. About two hours into the trip, an alert passenger spots a man dragging a large suitcase into a bathroom. That passenger, American-born Frenchman Marc Mugalian, becomes suspicious and goes to investigate. The train crosses the border from Belgium into France, when with 500 souls on board, Ayoub El Kazani, a 25-year-old Moroccan man, comes out of the bathroom armed to kill. An unidentified Frenchman is the first to encounter him. He tries to disarm him, but falls to the floor. Mugalian then rushes the gunman and manages to take his assault rifle. What he doesn't know at the time, his attacker has another gun. Shots ring out. Mugalian is hit. The bullet narrowly misses an artery. While Mugalian plays dead, Scarlatos realizes danger is afoot. His two buddies startled awake from a nap. A French train employee runs away from the danger. But the three Americans have a very different reaction. Alec just hit me on the shoulder to say, let's go. What happened next got the attention of the American president, the French president, and international media. Right now, we've got late details coming in from France where two Americans are injured and are being called heroes. Two American servicemen who jumped into action when a heavily armed man prepared to open fire. These three Americans, two of them U.S. service members, being hailed as heroes around the world after they took down the gunman. And tonight, for the first time on U.S. television, those three young Americans reunite to tell their incredible story. Joining us now in a Kelly File exclusive, college student Anthony Sadler, U.S. Air Force Airman First Class Spencer Stone, and Army National Guard Specialist Alec Scarlatos. When you grew up here in Sacramento, uh, were you faithful people? Are you, are you men of faith? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Yeah, we actually met um, in, a, in a school, a, a faith school, a Christian school, um, mm -hmm. in our middle school year. And um, they had been going there and I just came for that year and then uh, we we all left the school but we made friends ever since. So you believe in God? Yes. yes. Do you believe he has a hand in your fate and your lives? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Most definitely. <laughs> Especially this situation yes. if any. And yes. has it struck you that as you were growing up here in Sacramento learning about a kind and loving God there was a man over in Morocco growing up almost the same age as you learning about a very different type of God in his mind. One who he apparently believed wanted him to go kill a bunch of people, the very same people you guys would wind up protecting. Has it dawned on you? I mean, the juxtaposition between what you lived <coughs> and learned and what this man lived and learned. No, uh, I haven't really, yeah. I haven't really grasped that aspect of it. Um, I wasn't really, really thinking. Really, really care about his life that much. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Is that how you're feeling? What, how, how do you feel about him, this terrorist? I'm, I'm not really a fan. I think, it's, I, mean, I think it's weird that he was, you know, only three years older than all of us. You know, like what what's going on in his head to make him think that's okay. Um, I mean, and, and like and when everything was going down, we weren't thinking, you know, oh, what what religion does he practice or anything like that. He was just he was there to kill some people and. We weren't going to let that happen, I guess. So, so. And you were there to stop him. So you're on the train. You're, you're en route to, to France. And you're the one who first notes a sign of danger, Alec. Tell us, what, what was the first sign? Well, there was just a loud noise and breaking glass. I mean, it sounded absolutely like a gunshot. I just didn't think it was because we're on a train in France. So I didn't really think much of it until I saw a train porter... <coughs> run past us at a full sprint away from the noise and then I looked back to see what he was running away from and I guess that's about when they woke up too. What did you see? Just saw a guy coming into the train car with an AK. 
Was he, what was he wearing? Uh, nothing shirtless. I think he had his backpack on the front. And uh, pretty much mostly just was concentrating on the gun at that point. Yeah, understand. I was like, oh, man, no way. <laughs> right. I mean, does it, is, even with your military training, does it dawn on you in that moment, he's here to kill me, he's here to kill oh, everyone? I mean, that was absolutely the, I, yeah, we knew that instantly. I think all of us did. It just kind of was the shock of there's no way this is actually happening. Like, mm -hmm. and that was about the only Com thought I had. Disbelief. Yeah. Did he have yeah. it pointed, or where was the gun on him? He was uh, cocking he, it. He was yeah. like had it up in the air, and he had looked like it wasn't really working for him, or he just hadn't loaded it yet. So I mean, yeah, I think he was trying to charge it. Yeah. Is what it looked like. Did you hear screams? No, it was uh, actually it was, pretty quiet. Pretty which quiet. Was strange. I heard screams when the, the glass started breaking, mm -hmm. but then it stopped once he got in. I just, exactly. all I could hear was his footsteps walking in and then him uh, charging the gun. Was he saying anything? No, he didn't say a word. He, he never really said weird. a word beginning to end the whole time. Not even when we were fighting him. It was, it was, I didn't hear a grunt or anything like now, that. Now, before you saw him, you two guys were taking a nap. You, you were the first to see him. Did you have to wake these guys up or did, did you wake up? Uh, no, they woke up on their own. Uh, I imagine just the noise woke him up and then... Uh, the, the commotion of like the train employee running by is what woke me up. Yeah. Um, I I'd never heard a gunshot or the glass breaking, but like um, when he sprinted by us, like I kind of felt that movement, and then I woke up and to look at them, well, that's and exactly they're already when ducking down. Too. Like I looked over at you, and we were just both like. I kind of like it was just <laughs> was hard that? to comprehend. Yeah. Like when I looked back, I looked at them, and they were looking back. So then when I looked back, the first thing I seen was just a, a guy cocking an AK, and I'm like. Is this real? Like, this can't be real right now. And the, and you said something to your friends. What did you say? Well, I just told Spencer, like, let's go, go get him. And he did. <laughs> well, was there ever a thought on your part of, let's not go. Let, let's stay right here. No, not really. I was, I mean, that was frankly more of my thought. Like, I was like, let's go. <laughs> but, like, I didn't actually think that he was going to go. Yeah, so <laughs> Alec, Alec told me later, he was like, yeah. I didn't actually get up and go until you were about halfway there, because I just kind of like, go get him. Well, and, and then no, you did it, and I, I, I was like, I, okay. no. but he was there quick. What, happened, not like what, it was happened, really was, what happened was, I told him to go, but I mean, when your adrenaline's going, you get tunnel vision, so I'm just like staring at the guy, and I didn't even notice that Spencer had already left, and I didn't see him until he crossed my path when he was already about halfway there, so I was a good probably three, four seconds behind him. And so he already was like tackled and beaten on the terrace when I got there. So let's there. talk about that moment. So you, you instinctually, you just go, and, and Anthony's not far behind. You're first, though, to approach this terrorist. Mm -hmm. What did you do? What, what was your first approach to him? What, your first contact? I mean, I didn't really look at him, and I don't remember like seeing anything running up to him. I'm pretty sure I closed my eyes or something because I don't remember the run up to him. I just remember thinking in my head, like, I'm about to get shot. Yeah. yeah. That and, I might get shot. Yeah, and I'm just going to get mowed down right now. And uh, and then so I hit him, and I'm pretty sure he, like, uh, hit me with the gun as I came up to him because I immediately started bleeding, and my eye was, like, halfway closed and kind of blurry. And then I was just feeling for the gun. Uh, couldn't couldn't really get it. He kept pulling it away from me, and then that's when I put him in the rear naked choke. And then Alec ran up. You got around behind him and put him in a chokehold. I, I just kind of like tossed him. I don't know. I just kind of manhandled him a little bit. So you're there as well, though. So you're getting around behind him, and you you take the gun from him. Is that what happened? I took the uh, when I when I came up to him, the AK was already on the floor. I guess he dropped it in the scuffle. I don't exactly know. But uh, when I got up to him, I mean, again, I kind of blacked out for the whole run up there. And the first memory I have is seeing him pull out a handgun, and I just grab with both hands, pry it out of his hands, and then try to shoot him with it. And I guess that was probably about the time Spencer was getting stabbed with the box cutter. I'm not sure when exactly. Because it well, just—it yeah. was weapon after weapon, the AK-47 and the handgun and the box cutters. I mean, right. where was he getting all these weapons from? His pockets, I guess. <laughs> no we don't idea. know. I didn't necessarily watch him pull it out, but it's just like we're all like surrounding him. Spencer kind of has him like in a bear hug at first. He doesn't put him in the rear naked choke until like the weapons are dropped for the most part. And then when he put him in the rear naked choke, then that's when the box cutter came out. And then he tried to get him with that. What is a rear naked choke? Uh, it's something they use in jujitsu. Uh, practice jujitsu and like, uh, so you're behind them and then you slip your arm in front of their neck and then you uh, go like that and it kind of squeezes and cuts off both carotid arteries. So what are you two doing while he's got him in the rear naked choke? It's like before before anybody picked up a gun, like we had we had hit him a few times, like 
it was like a scuffle. Like Spencer was always engaged with him. Like they were always body to body, grabbing him in some way. And then I just remember when me and Alec first ran up, like I just started swinging. I don't remember where I hit him or how I hit him. I just remember like to hit him at some way. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the box cutter comes out and Spencer screams, get the knife, get the knife. Like, and cause we didn't really notice at first, like this was all happening in seconds. And then, um, we tussle with him some more and then he ends up dropping the box cutter and then Alec picks up the AK and tries to charge that and it just didn't work again. It was jammed. Well, no, he had, it, it, he had cycled it. Was, it. It, wasn't, yeah. uh, it wasn't jammed. When I picked it up, I believe it was on safe, but he had fired it already because when I ejected the, uh, well, that's kind of, yeah. After it all settled down, I picked the AK up to look through the rest of the train and I knew it wasn't working, so I cycled another round into the chamber. And when I ejected the previous round, I saw that the firing pin, the firing pin had struck the primer, and the primer just didn't ignite. So he had tried to shoot Spencer, and didn't go God, off. God, God was there. 